All right. Welcome back to Two Stupid Gas Trade Stocks. I'm Vinny. I'm Dylan. Uh, the topic of this video, the title is a little bit inflammatory, but we're not trying to gloat at all. Uh, I have absolutely been here before, and now AMC, everything's tanking, so we're just here to offer a little bit of guidance, a little bit of help. Exactly. If you guys enjoy this kind of entertaining stock market content, please get, consider giving us a like and subscribe below. With that, we'll get to it. Two stupid guys trade stocks. All right. All right. Yeah, a couple of previous videos here about similar topics. Yeah, and if uh, no one wants to listen to us, don't listen to us. That's fine. I just. I've, I've done this whole thing with movie pass as we'll get to, but, uh, if you see these two videos, uh, if you own AMC based on the fundamentals, you are an idiot. Vinny joins the ape gang. So look at the dislikes. Oh, so yeah. much. Uh, that was not a well-liked video. And a lot of the comments, uh, you could kind of tell that people watch the first five seconds because, um, a lot of the comments were fairly incoherent to the topic. Uh, but that is, that is YouTube Vinny. So. Yeah, I know. Right. That's social media in general. And his social media in general. And then there was another, uh, you know, Burry. Uh, we had this great video with uh, Burry talking about the leverage in crypto, how dangerous it is. Um, dangerous it is. And, uh, you know, a lot of people won't listen to Burry either. So, yeah. Ooh. Exactly. That. You're talking about 101 leverage ratio out of some uh, uh, cryptocurrency exchanges in China. Um, and then in terms of the AMC video, you're going to see, I'm actually going to do uh, go through their financials briefly and kind of show you like what the stock price would be on reasonable free cash flow yield. All right, let's do it. So just to point out here, I have done this before. Very, very similar. This There's stocks that do this. Like I feel like once a year, there's always like one. This one just has more media around it. Um, but if anyone's heard of MoviePass, I already did this um, where I got in the hype. I was like, man, I even bought the, the card, the MoviePass card. Do you ever own the card, Vinny? I never owned the card. I owned yeah, the stock well, for about like, you know, two hours. I know we we were in class together. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so you could see on my Robinhood graph there, Vinny. Where do you think I bought? I'm guessing somewhere around here is when you bought into MoviePass. That is correct. Yeah. Now, yeah. as it start started falling, um, where do you think I added to my position? Uh, I would say you bought the dip. You know, maybe potentially right here, maybe this one. I don't know. It's definitely possible. Yeah, yeah. Probably, probably bought the dip. And then you then then you're really sold on the real dip. Oh yeah, I sold all the way where your arrow is. Yeah. Um, obviously, MoviePass was the worst possible company in the world. Uh, their business model was here's a bunch of money to everyone who buys uh, the MoviePass. It was the stupidest thing in the world. Um, but I've been there, and you know the biggest thing is learn from it. So exactly there's money to be made here you know that's why i, I kind of took a little snip of this thing on its way up and you know got in and out really quickly made a couple hundred bucks and then left because like i don't trust graphs that look like this <laughs> yeah, as you probably shouldn't yeah yeah exactly so like i said i'm not here to gloat i've already done this before um if your bet on amc or crypto or doge or bitcoin was small I don't, you know, go for it. The whole point of having a small portion of your portfolio being highly risky, I mean, that that's, that's, I think that's healthy, just like one or 2%. What do you say? Yeah, yeah, I agree. We did a video specifically about position sizing after a comment on our last AMC video uh, talking about that. It's, it's, it's completely reasonable to put one to 2% of your portfolio into something that's high risk, high reward, as long as you understand the storyline. Problem is this YOLO culture. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, and FUD. Anytime you make any video saying, hey, this might not be a great idea. No. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, exactly. He's just spreading FUD, man. Just a FUD man. That's it. <laughs> See, you got to love it. You ever hear Warren Buffett use the word term FUD? <laughs> I have not heard Warren Buffett say yeah. FUD. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But, okay. um, another thing here, if you're wondering like, well, I could just hold on to AMC, um, you know, it'll, it'll come up eventually this, it, it's not like Apple, right? So usually you don't want to sell during a market crash cause you don't know where the bottom is and you don't know how fast it's going to go up. Um, this is not the same thing. This is clearly bloated beyond any reasonable doubt. This has no fundamental or even technical, like, like there's no reason for it to be this price. So yeah. Exactly. 
uh, you know, this this is kind of what's been the the, the storyline for the last month or so for a lot of these like meme stocks and like the crypto kind of world of the last couple months. Yep. Yeah, and it should even be that price, um, but you know, it's on its way down. So we got we're, some other graphs for you. Yeah, we're getting to that in a, mis- a minute here. Is Bitcoin down forty eight percent over the last three months? Uh, you know, people talk about how like uh, you know, no government can regulate you know cryptocurrency, and that's part of their investment thesis for it. But you know, the, the fact that the Chinese have kind of limited the transaction within Bitcoin and you know Bitcoin mining and things like that have really uh, had a pretty serious deleterious effect on on the stock on the Bitcoin price here when you're down fifty percent in a matter of three months. And that's just from China saying we don't like this. Yeah, and then they're going to start their own. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know who's going to be involved in their own? Alibaba. Through Alipay, Ooh. Hey, yes, hey. but yeah, Dogecoin, same thing. Uh, I, I was telling more shares Thursday. Just throw that out there. Oh boy, nice. Uh, I was telling Dylan, I, uh, I have like a distant family member who apparently was up to like you know six figures within Dogecoin at one point in time, and uh, I they still hold it to this day, as far as I'm aware. I don't know what the portfolio is worth now, but yeah, they they've had. Uh, what's that? Do they partial at all? I, I don't think so. I, I, I they're not a investor. Okay. Yeah, they're just someone that you know heard this thing and put a bunch of money into it, and it was up really high, and they just kept thinking it would keep going higher. My my dad was into uh, Bitcoin. And he didn't even tell me. He told me he's like, "Hey man, like I, I'm it's at sixty k. What should I do?" I was like, "All right, sell all of it. Don't even keep ten percent. Sell ninety percent at sixty k." So he's he's pretty happy. Nice, nice. Yeah, I still have like a hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. Um. So uh, there's been a lot of um, people saying that these are relatively the same. AMC and GME, these are in no way equivalent situations. Um, GameStop's short interest was, it's very complicated how this happens, but it was actually, it was over 100%, and that's a whole different thing. Um, Like the short float was in the 90s. AMC, it was like 25%. It's not even remotely close. It's not even remotely close to the same thing. The only way that AMC can keep going higher is essentially a pyramid scheme. Um, it's almost like, you know, if, as if there's these people making YouTube videos promoting it and then they sell their share. I don't think people would do that though, right, Vinny? No, no, not at all. The SEC yeah. uh, doesn't care about that at all. Yeah. yeah. Definitely don't type into Google, uh, should I buy AMC now? That you, you won't be tons of videos saying it's a great deal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, one more thing, another the AMC deal. The CEO, I, we've already talked about this, but GameStop did not do this. A- AMC did like multiple share offerings, two a week apart. One they did after saying they're not going to do one for a year. He did it three hours later, and then gave people free popcorn. So like, it, it's just it's not a good it's not a good company at all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the CEO is looking out for the company over the shareholders in, yeah. in AMC's case. Uh, GameStop was. They, they walked the line a little bit better about looking out for both the company and the shareholders, I think, uh, at least in my opinion. I agree, 100%. Yeah, so I went through the financials from AMC for the last five years. And, uh, you know, from like a value-oriented investing kind of standpoint, what, what I really care about is like, you know, what are they producing at the the, the bottom of the balance sheet, their income statement there? Um, the free cash flow for AMC for the last five years has averaged about $507 million, right? That, that's this number right here. These are the individual per year, right? Um, so I, I took that number of $507 million of free cash flow, and I used a couple of different yields here, both 5% and, 20, and 10% um, free cash flow yield to determine a market cap that I thought would be reasonable for AMC. Um, and uh, it, you know, if you're talking about a 5% uh, free cash flow yield, meaning you know, you're paying today for the next 20 years of free cash flow for the company at a 5% yield. It gives it about $10 billion uh, market cap, uh, which is about a $20 per share price. All right. And for a company that has been flat for the last five years in the dying industry, uh, I mean, I, I would be reluctant to pay more than a 10% free cash flow yield, which puts it at more about a $5 billion market cap or about $10 per share. And when I talk about the free cash flow here, I'm not even thinking about the CapEx, right? So different industries have different capital expenditure, meaning how much money they have to put back into the business to keep the business running forward every year. And in AMC's case, their five-year CapEx uh, average is $626 million, meaning they, they generate after 
uh, you know, running the business and, and, you know, selling tickets and all that sort of stuff and paying all their employees and all their expenses. Um, they generate about $500 million a year in cash, you know, and then they have, you know, depreciation and amortization that that's where you kind of get that, um, you know, kind of bump up there to the 500 million. But now you're having to take the $626 million out of that. And if you subtracting 20, 626 million for 500 million, you're ending up with a negative number. Meaning that they are not really generating free cash flow to equity, which is what really counts. Yes. So, yeah, um, you know, this is not a company I would invest in based on a fundamental basis. And for the people that were triggered uh, by the dying industry phrase that uh, Vinny just said, which I'm sure there are some, um, Black Widow just released and had like, a, was it like 27 or 25? It was twenty seven percent of the revenue. It was like I think you said sixty million dollars somewhere in that ballpark. Sixty million on Disney Plus. Yeah. So Disney basically and companies don't usually publish that stuff. Disney purposely released that information because they're trying to send a signal to movie theater chains saying, like, you know, I am the captain now. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I will tell you what you can play and what, you know, what you're going to have to pay me and that sort of stuff. That That's what they're doing. They're, they're in a position of dominance and they're showing that. Yeah. They essentially snatched 60 from like the 160. I don't remember what it did. Um, but from the 60, the, the total percent that they did, they snatched 60 million away in sales from AMC and all theaters. Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like it. So, uh, crypto is becoming untethered. Do you like the title, Vinny? I love it. Yeah, a nice little tether pun there. You know, if you if, Google, uh, Google tether uh, coin, stable coin. <laughs> do it. Do it. It's a great, uh, horrible thing. Um, yeah. So basically, this is just some uh, some stuff on crypto. Um, one, I don't hate crypto. I hate what cryptos become. There are some good examples of crypto. My favorite is probably Ether. Because of the block, the actual technology behind it, but um, now it's just ridiculous. So these are some events. Uh, China's banned crypto and experimenting with their own crypto. Hence the giant tank and all the crypto say uh, all the crypto prices. Crypto scams are at an all time high. We won't go into that too much because uh, we already have. Vinny, you want to do? Yeah. So you know the, the the one the crazy interesting one right now is the Save the Kids coin. Um, so I had never heard of them before because I'm not really an esports kind of guy, but apparently there's this group called Phase Clan, and uh, they're a, the, I guess the largest or um, you know esports group, and uh, a few of their members were promoting the Save the Kids coin. Um, the whole idea was that there'd be a transaction fee on every transaction, which would be donated to charity, uh, to save the kids, right? Um, and it basically turned into this massive like you know potential pump and dump scheme where people that were given coins before it went to IPO were just selling them rapidly as, as the coin went public. Um, and there's been, uh, you know, see coffee Zilla's video about this. There's been some uh, debate about how the initial rules stated that they could only sell a certain portion of their holdings per like unit time, if you get it, like, you know, 10% a day or whatever. But at, at, right before launch, the developer was instructed to remove that limitation um, so that the, the people that had been given these pre-launch coins were able to sell off their entire holdings uh, within a matter of like a day. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the price right now. It, it dropped in a day. Yeah, <laughs> it, just, it just died in a day. Yeah, so that, that phase clan uh, threw out one member and then suspended two more over their promotion of this because they were using, you know, kind of the, their online uh, following in order to be able to promote this coin. Right. Yeah, crazy. And then uh, J-Pow, during the, which is, to, in my opinion, the worst thing that can happen to crypto is um, J Jerome Powell in the last Fed meeting said, you would not need stable coins. You would need cryptocurrencies if you have a digital U.S. currency. Uh, that should strike fear into absolutely every person owning cryptocurrency right now. Yeah, yeah exactly. This is uh, kind of some screenshots I took from Wall Street Bets. It's an entertaining place to check out. But, you know, these are some folks with uh, AMC losses. Um, you know, the, the big one these days, I think, has been like Wish and Space. I've seen a lot of people posting losses from those. But, um, you know, AMC is still up there. Obviously, they've lost 40 percent in a few months. But so, you know, these are all folks with normal account sizes that are losing you know, several thousand dollars, you know, you know, with, you know, four thousand, ten thousand. 
um, you know, eighteen thousand dollars that this person's lost. I mean, ten thousand that was AMC and eight thousand GME. But it, it's unfortunate, you know. And then the problem is, is that I see these, and I'm like, how many of these people are going to get turned off from investing and think investing is just like a game that they can never win at? And that, that's not true, you know. You just have to be cautious about it and 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 learn over time. And like, you know, Dylan and I have both done stupid things and we've lost money, and that that's, you know, it's from those times that you you learn to get better. Yep. I've done probably more stupid things. Yeah, I mean, it's been a while. I, I, I can't remember some of my good ones, but it's it, it, they've definitely happened. And I, hell, I'm still doing stupid ones. Wait till you see our next stimulus account update. <laughs> yeah, we uh, uh, we're 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 both in in the depression aspect of this. Um, so here's the five stages of trader depression. Um, this is great because like the eight people that are still watching, because a lot of people get triggered by the thumbnail or the title. This is going to be really awesome because you're going to see one of two things happen in the comments. One, you're going to see people in stage one and two in the comments, right? AMC and crypto is down now. It's going to come back. You guys are idiots. Guaranteed to be a comment, right? Uh, anger, they're just going to say, hey, these guys don't know shit. Like, hit the dislike button, which is it's inevitable. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the other thing is there's going to be crypto bots that will automatically comment on this video. It's going to be like a span of like 20 or something. And they're all going to be like, investing is too hard. You should do crypto. And then someone's going to recommend a fake name on a WhatsApp. Yep. That's going to happen. Pretty close. Um, anyone still watching when you see these comments, just like, just reply stage one under it or stage two. And you're going to mess with them so bad. They're going to have no idea what that means. Um, but here are the five stages. Uh, bargaining is what I have my biggest issue with. I'll be like, ah, if I can just, just get back to break even. Um, no bueno. Depression. You're physically, just mentally disconnected from the money that you're losing and you just stop caring, i.e. me and Vinny and our STEM accounts uh, right now um, <laughs> after we our STEM accounts are the unbelievably high-risk positions that we're, we're screwed. Um, and acceptance. You're out of the trade. Uh, you either learn from it or you do what Vinny said, markets have to get me investing is a scam. Exactly. Exactly. That, 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 that's, that's what we're really worried about is, you know, seeing that sort of mentality in the market. But yeah, this is, this is uh, Dylan broke down the crypto formula as of right now. <laughs> yeah. You no longer need technology. Um, you can just, just create a coin, the Vinny coin. Okay. Then it's Vinny's right. face as the mascot. That's it. You get a bunch of people to buy them. You use celebrity endorsements like Save the Kids, Soldier Boy. Who, those of you who don't know Soldier Boy, what did he do? Uh, I can't remember the name of the the song. He was like a one hit wonder, basically. No, I meant like the crypto stuff. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, the uh, so he accidentally tweeted, uh, you know, about a coin, and he left in the part of the message from the the coin creator where they were going to pay him. I think it was twenty or thirty thousand dollars to promote the coin. Right, yeah. he posted yeah. it. Yeah, just, yeah, whoops. <laughs> yeah, and then there's Stanley from The Office uh, breaking my heart yeah. doing this too. So, and then Dave Portnoy, you know, it's early if it's a Ponzi scene, get it on the ground floor. Um, that's the really the crypto formula. You just do that and then you sell all your holdings day one. Yeah. It's really, really exactly. healthy. Yeah, it's it's pretty unfortunate, you know, and, and you know, Crypto has kind of got this uh, dual classification where it's an investment, but not an investment. So it's not being held to the same rules and people aren't disclosing their positions regarding like, you know, uh, cryptocurrencies, which is, it's really unfortunate. Like, you know, come on, like, you know, just, just have a little bit of like moral backbone and just, you know, say something. There's none. No, no, there isn't. There's none. Yeah. Uh, um, we, we were going to do an extra clip and put it in here, but we had copyright issues. But there's a clip from The Office that shows the five stages of grief. We're going to link it in the comments. It's ironic because Stanley's in it, and he's now a blatant liar. Yeah. Uh, it's not good. But it's basically a pyramid scheme. So, All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Have a good one.